Well, welcome to the next of our cos- Christ-centered cosmic civilization podcasts, and we're changing direction now. We've done a lot about maths and numbers for a few weeks, and now we're going to pivot to talk about. Um, I'll call it just the Fey world, and this will worry some people right away because they might say well angels that we looked at to begin with that seemed fair enough um that's in the bible um uh and then maths and numbers there's nothing more down to earth than that but now talking about the world of the fey or the furry world um sounds uh just completely ridiculous um but nevertheless they are in the Bible, as we'll see as we go through, and they have been an enormous part of world history, um, all down through the ages, all over the world. They are the uh, uh, level of creatures that are uh, encountered, written about, depicted, analysed, uh, related to in all sorts of ways. But um, the reason we need to take them seriously is because the because the part of the biblical uh, world and um, we want to understand how they fit into this cosmic civilization. Now, the word fey um, seems to be that's just this word that we use. It's a kind of European word that was. Uh, is used to describe that and the word furry and you get that Edmund Spencer's furry queen from the late uh, 16th century um and it's that word that is well the word itself probably comes from an origin meaning doomed to die soon and so it's like as if the fey world lives at the boundary of life and death, or it's it's like sometimes associated with the dusk between um, day and night uh, on this boundary. It's a boundary existence. And so places, there are some places that are considered to be thin to the Fey world where people encounter these sorts of creatures much more readily. And those that uh, write about this and do this believe that it is at dusk or perhaps dawn that these they are most readily apparent but dusk seems to be the preferable um for this be, really because it's the notion of the boundary and there's something about being at the boundary between the heavens and the earth or life and death or light and darkness that is peculiar to this uh, level of uh, cosmic existence so um, the world of the Fae is a world that's uh, more detached from our seen and earthly level of existence. So the scriptures uh, in Colossians 1 and other places, 2 Corinthians and so on, there's this de- demarcation between the what the, what is seen and what is unseen, the um, and the, the seen level of existence like what we'll call earthly and to a degree the first and second heaven um we in the modern world have kind of reduced the whole of the cosmic civilization down to only the scene only what is superficially apparent i'm going to show that that actually isn't true that we of believed in unseen things perhaps as much as any other age but we uh, consciously think that we only believe in the seen uh, and superficial level of reality but the bible tells us no there are unseen levels with powers and principalities it's like kingdoms there are whole kingdoms and levels of existence that are unseen to us and what the most important thing we need to know is that Christ created all these things. They are for him, ultimately, even if different levels of existence have gone awry and become broken and fallen and um, twisted. But nevertheless, they were created by him, for him. 
And even now, under this broken, fallen, present age, they still are under his reign. Colossians 1 makes that very clear. And the whole book of Revelation shows us that, that every level of existence, including the weird and wonderful, all of it, and, and it doesn't matter that we we ourselves don't know about these levels of existence or perceive them. Um, the Bible's saying, yes, there are levels of existence that you don't see, you don't perceive, but don't worry about them. They belong to Christ. He's in control of them. You don't need to worry about getting control of them. You don't need to fear them either, as long as you are in Christ, you're part of his kingdom, you're covered by his rule. But this world then of the fae or the fairy, it's not strictly a heavenly level of reality. It's not like the angelic level. It seems to be below that, but perhaps above earthly. It seems to be then a level of existence that is not normally visible to our broken, fallen level of perception. Now, let's just take our breath straight away and think about the modern world and how uh, this idea of unseen levels of reality, how that is handled. So a um, helpful analogy might be the way we moderns think about bacteria and viruses. We are now very comfortable with the idea of there being an unseen level of creatures who are constantly around us and on us and in us, causing some good, but much harm also, and that we have constant daily patterns, rituals, that are designed to protect us from this unseen level of creature. Uh, possibly we have rituals that um, promote the presence of and blessings of this unseen level of creature. And, and these tiny unseen creatures are not visible to normal human eyes or perception, though we would say that we uh, detect or sense or are aware of their presence because of things that happen in our lives, from illnesses, even and also to health too. We would um, say, ah, my my digestion is very good because of the unseen creatures that. Uh, I have encouraged to inhabit there, or we might say I'm off work this week because the unseen creatures have disabled me and given me a dis-ease. But if we have the right equipment uh, or use the right rituals, uh, it, it, we might make these unseen tiny creatures visible in some measure. So the relevant ritual to make uh, the bacteria or uh, viruses visible might be, for example, that we might take a Petri dish filled with a nutrient-rich gel or just a sugary gel, and then we might believe there to be these um, unseen creatures in a particular location, either in our bodies or on on. We might want to. We might suspect there are many of these unseen creatures um, on our sink or in our bathroom or something, and we wish to make them visible to understand them and understand which kind of creature is present. And so we may take a swab from a location where we believe the unseen tiny creatures are present and then wiping that swab onto the prepared Petri dish, we have completed the first stage of the ritual. Then we may keep that Petri dish uh, under the right circumstances in a 
a, a somewhat warm environment um, protected from intrusion by other uh, creatures. And then, in a strange way, the presence of the unseen tiny creatures may become visible over the next, say, 48 hours or three days or whatever, and then we look at the Petrogist and then we see, ah, they've now become manifest in some way. Uh, in, in the, They have grown, they have uh, produced a visible manifestation um, in the gel, and now we may be able to like see more clearly uh, to determine what it is that what kind of a unseen creature has now become seen, so all of that we are quite familiar with, comfortable with. We may be practitioners of that engagement with that unseen level of existence, um, and and so the 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 idea of interacting with unseen levels of existence is not very peculiar. In fact. It's something we're all too familiar with and actually construct our lives around that uh, to, a de- to a large degree. And particularly um, after the global pandemic days, unprecedented days of the global pandemic and so on, uh, the idea of wearing masks, gloves, hand cleansers, so many procedures that are geared to dealing with um, le- creatures that are entirely unseen, but who make their presence felt. Um, in another way, the modern world, many, many, many people in the modern world, I, I'd, I'd almost want to say a majority of um, urban-dwelling moderns, particularly English-speaking, sincerely believe uh yeah, I would say sincerely believe, sometimes with quite a passion, that there are extraterrestrial beings in the second heaven, in what we would call space, uh, th- though we have not seen them. They are not really visible to us, though uh, reports of them being present to some people uh, and and um, fragmentary records, dubious photos, things like that, are all collected and examined and um, assessed for credibility. But nevertheless, huge numbers of people sincerely believe that though they cannot see them, they believe there to be in the in the in space possibly huge civilizations maybe that existed long ago but and maybe still exist and maybe they've been around for vast uh, quantities of time uh, but they are unseen creatures civilizations even in the heavens uh, in the in the second heaven anyway and that possibly they visit us, um, and that chosen few are visited, maybe done harm to, maybe blessed, and that um, these unseen creatures are capable of giving us great blessings or else great danger. So again, the notion of that there are mostly unseen creatures, in this case, large creatures with great uh, complexity and civilization uh, there are uh, th- they do exist though we cannot see them and that of course there's enormous amounts of uh, books films games that are constructed around the notion of unseen aliens that are in the heavens but that in the games books and films they become visible and their interaction is is very obvious. Um, Also, uh, again, it's become very, very common, particularly with people of a certain kind of scientific bent, to, again, quite sincerely believe that parallel to, alongside our universe, are multiple, many, many, multiples of parallel universes 
that are unseen to us, but truly exist and possibly even interact with our universe in complex um, ways that are hard, like really intangible almost, but that there are really existing um, infinite, in fact, number of universes. I've heard quite serious minded people very sincerely urge that there are infinite, unseen, parallel universes existing alongside our own. And each of these unseen parallel universes is uh, intensely populated with uh, creatures of every size, from tiny to to massive. Um, But all in these parallel universes, some of them are fantastically strange Every possibility of existence is explored and manifested in the infinite universes, unseen universes that exist parallel to our own. Now, I I just don't believe that at all, but it is a very, very common belief. Um, just And there's no real need for any sort of genuine evidence of it. It's considered to be a sort of necessary foundation belief uh, for explaining this world, this universe. But um, we would argue that having a Christ-centred cosmic civilization understanding of the only uni- universe that there is, this one, um is 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 a much more satisfactory explanation. Now, having said all that, then it uh, we want to um, make it clear then that the idea of there being unseen levels of existence or parallel levels, parallel dimensions of existence, is something that moderns are relatively common with and actually have integrated into their lives. And it's kind of an accepted and understandable understandable part of the modern world. But if we go back before the modern world, there was also a, an understanding of unseen levels of existence, but n- not so not so many. I think it was more narrow, uh, m- narrowly focused in ancient and medieval times. Not so it isn't like in the modern world, it's so expansive the belief in unseen levels and dimensions of reality, uh, sort of uncontrolled, really. But in ancient medieval times, it isn't an uncontrolled thing, it isn't a kind of almost free for all, it's a very narrowly defined uh, way of understanding the world and. This realm of the unseen, we thought about the angelic levels, but there's this other level that we're calling here just the fey world. And um, it's something that was very, un- quite well understood, many examples of interactions with it. It's present in the Bible, present in Christian art, theology. Um, poetry, uh, just life, the imaginarium of Christian life for thousands of years all over the world. And not just the Christian, actually, even beyond Christian world, this fey world is represented all over the world in different cultures. And yet, um, modern, uh, this, this way of understanding higher or adjacent levels of unseen creatures um, is not really very much part of the modern world. And it's either completely lost to us, the way of interacting and understanding, or it's so alien to the modern way of seeing the world that we just no longer understand them. We no longer perhaps find them credible, the these accounts of the fey world. But we do find other uh, other, uh, accounts of unseen things credible, but we don't find that credible. So I've said all that in order just to situate us in this discussion that will happen over the next few episodes so that we um, 
hopefully have at least an open mind to be ready to uh, think in the way ancients and medievals thought. And in fact, um, I suppose in the world as a whole, the majority of the world today probably still does have a, a certain level of belief in what we will call the Fae. So, um, within the Bible, there are heavenly creatures that are normally unseen. That's the angelic ones, um, but also these fey ones. But they show up a surprising number of times throughout the whole Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, they're almost a normal, the, 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 the unseen level. Let's just group angels and... Angels occupy more of the Bible than the Fae, definitely. But let's just group angels and Fae together for a moment and just call them the unseen level of reality. They are almost a normal aspect of full reality in the Bible. They're almost to be expected if people are engaged in the business of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. So if you just read through the Bible and just paying attention to were angels and then as as you go on and, and, and start to be aware of these other kinds of creatures too, just notice how often they occur, how often they are just, just around and with the prophets and the apostles. Let's just think of angels for a minute. Prophets and apostles just seem to bump into angels all the time and they're very aware of their activity. And so it's as if in the Bible there's this like big, full uh, vision of reality and that people in the Bible are not shocked or stunned or discombobulated by encountering something that is normally unseen. It's as if they just take that in the strength. They expect that. They know that that's part of full reality. And if people are engaged in the business of heaven, in the business of the kingdom of heaven, um, they almost expect to encounter such creatures. And uh, as we've thought in previous episodes, though many modern Christians retain a kind of theoretical belief in, quote, angels... Uh, even if even well, they do contain that, have this um, theoretical belief in angels, but they don't really believe them, most Christians in the modern English-speaking world, don't really believe them to be actively present in normal created, created existence, as we've seen perhaps because they may have a doctrine of God or particularly the Holy Spirit that leaves no room for any other un for any unseen creatures at all but this other level of unseen reality and now let's think of it in terms of not just angels no not even angels at all let's leave angels now and focus specifically on the fey or the furry uh, we might even call this a mythological these creatures are often called legendary creatures or mythological creatures that realm has effectively fallen completely out of modern Christian perception and awareness in terms of the real world, real life, day-to-day -day life. Although, you know, as we've said, it can live on in fiction, games and novels in a fairly disorganised and speculative format. In terms of normal day-to-day -day life, if you were to start to, well, talk about these sort of mythological creatures of the fey it would be considered like oh there's something wrong with you you're you're ludicrous leave that to your entertainment but not to the real world now i want to argue that this unseen level of reality might be described as caught in the curtain and so like there's a book um uh, that we're working on and about this level of reality and we're going to call it caught in the curtain why are we thinking of that well that's just it, it'll be something that if you're used to this uh, podcast you'll you'll already be thinking about this but 
let's just be in in the rest of our time in this introductory episode think about that why the fae or the fairy world is is called caught in the curtain the bible and the construction of the tabernacle especially seems to suggest that the original design and form of the heavens and the earth was as a single interconnected reality, not divided into the heavens and the earth or the highest heaven cut off or anything like that, but a a single united uh, cosmos with no divisions at all. But with the events of Genesis 3, a division, a breach, an exile has disrupted reality at the very deepest level so that now when we gaze up into the heavens we see the first heaven fairly clearly the second heaven in a somewhat patchy way i don't think we see the second heaven remotely as thoroughly or as well as many people think we do I think most of the second heaven is kind of unseen to us, but some of it we see, and with telescopes we see different parts of it and so on. And then we see almost nothing of the third heaven. So the higher the level of reality, in a way, the less of it we see. The Bible depicts this in terms of a curtain that divides the heavens and the earth. A curtain that blocks the way for us to access or even perceive the unseen heavenly levels of existence. And we need this to be quite strong because um, we, we in this present darkness or on earth are, are really fundamentally shut off from the vast majority of cosmic reality uh we in in many of the more of the older models of the universe it's as if we are almost um like in in a in a backwater that it doesn't get news of what's really going on imagine living in an exciting king like a kingdom a nation that's got cities and uh you know fascinating technology and there's news and all sorts of things going on but you or we were living in um sort of like a a, a like um a shed somewhere out in the wilderness and so hardly anything of what's going on in the nation we know about we don't have a radio we don't have we don't really have any way of contacting the what's going on or, or or receiving information about what's going on in the nation, and we sort of just live out our existence in a shed in a, in the in a in the middle of the wilderness. And we get sometimes things might fly over, or we might hear sounds in the distance and things like that. And we might get little snatches, and we go, "Oh, wow! There's there's probably quite a lot going on somewhere." But we don't really have any knowledge of it or access to it. Um, And so we're sort of in this relatively dark situation. Um, And and we don't, we, we, we can't, we're not really part of what's going on in that much larger national context. In a way, that is how our exiled life on earth is understood in the Bible. As Ephesians 2.12 puts it, the natural state of humanity is to be atheist. That is to be without God in the cosmos. So that there's this kingdom of the heavens, this cosmic civilization that's rich and full and heavily populated and has all sorts of levels of existence and all kinds of billions of creatures spread throughout the heavens and so on and all this kind of thing. And, and but we are, we don't know anything of that. This that like we actually are without God, and to be without God is to be without um, any sort of cosmic civilization in a deep sense. Now the intellectual atheist owns this and sort of says that's right. I am without God. I don't even think there is a God, and I take pride in it. But even if we're not like that, the um, 
the default state of humanity is to live as atheists without God and cut off from cosmic reality. Ephesians 2 verse 2 explains that this atheist state is controlled by a power of the air, the devil, an uns- part of the unseen levels of reality. And the devil controls the basic way that humans think and perceive. And so we, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's described as the god of this age who blinds the minds of unbelievers. So that's the kind of situation we're in. And there's this sort of then... The, the inability to see most of cosmic reality, it's not that we say, ah, we can see clearly using our reason or our tools of investigation, and the whole of reality is open to reason and our tools of investigation. And therefore, if we can't see things, they just don't exist. When we look at things from the bigger picture and this sort of more cosmic reality picture, that's not it. It's that we have been exiled and blinded and put behind a curtain because we are dangerous, we are unsafe. We have been pushed away and put behind a curtain. And because we're behind that curtain, it doesn't. We do, the reason we cannot perceive most of reality is that we're not allowed to. We have been shut off from seeing it we are banned from interacting with most of reality we're not safe we're we're dangerous and must ultimately be purged away out of the cosmos so the cosmic curtain that divides us from the highest heaven is guarded by the flaming fire of the guardian angels and we cannot get through it we don't even wouldn't know how to even attempt such a thing really so the curtain has come down We are exiled, shut out of the centre and soul of cosmic reality. We are unaware of the cosmic throne room. We are living in a strange, disconnected and isolated fragment of full reality. And maybe we are raging at the heavens for the misery, death and decay that we suffer, given that we are cut off behind the curtain from the throne of light and life. So the furry realm or the fey realm, this kind of category that we're trying to get hold of, seems to be a level of creaturely reality that is neither fully heavenly nor simply of the earth. It seems to lie somewhere in between being hidden from normal exiled human sight, and yet this level of reality is caught up in earthly life. So it belongs to the earth in many ways, and yet it's almost also kind of part of a heavenly, a higher level of existence, and as if it's a dimension of existence that runs alongside our own, earthly running alongside our own level of existence, but but somewhat higher and somewhat then behind the curtain. So it impinges upon us. It's occasionally visible to us, sometimes causing trouble for us, mostly unknown to us. And so we want to call it a level of existence that is caught in the curtain. Caught in the curtain. As if there were a whole level of creatures and possibly kingdoms that existed in the place where the curtain exists between heaven and earth. So that these strange and scary, mysterious and miraculous creatures are hidden to our earthly perception, perhaps except to those who are especially close to the curtain, those that are especially pushing into the heavenlies. And that's why in the lives of the saints, there are so many records of their open interactions with the fey creatures and kingdoms.